ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर अष्टप्रायशो भद्रेश भागवत सेवया भगवती ऋतम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवतीष्टी ओम ज्ञानतिलांद से ज्ञानांजन शलांक चक्षुन्मील मेन तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमो विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामीना नमस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद प्रियद्वैत गदाधर शिवासादि गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे उंडेड and from sound come the ethereal sky and the sense of hearing sense of hearing it appears from this verse that all the objects of our sense gratification are the products of egoism in ignorance it is understood from this verse that by agitation of the element of egoism in ignorance the first thing produced was sound which is a subtle form of ether It is stated also in the Vedant Sutra that sound is the origin of all objects of material possession, and that by sound one can also dissolve this material existence. Anavritti shabdat means liberation by sound. The entire material manifestation began from sound, and sound can also end material entanglement if it has a particular potency. The particular sound capable of doing this is the transcendental vibration. Hare Krishna. Our entanglement in material affairs had. has begun from material sound now we must purify that sound in spiritual understanding there is found in the spiritual world also if we approach that sound then our spiritual life begins and the other requirements for spiritual advancement can be supplied we have to understand very clearly that sound is the beginning of the creation of all material objects for our sense gratification similarly if sound is purified our spiritual necessities are all also are produced from sound mm, so gopal is highlighting here chanting hare krishna and also shavanam here it is said that from sound the ether became manifested and that the air became manifested from ether so sound ether air how the ethereal sky comes from sound how the air comes from sky and how fire comes from air will be explained later on sound is the cause of the sky and the sky is the cause of shrotram the ear the ear is the first sense of receiving knowledge one must give oral reception to any knowledge one wants to receive either material or spiritual therefore shrotram is very important the vedic knowledge is called shruti knowledge has to be received by hearing by hearing only can we have access to either material or spiritual enjoyment in the material world we manufacture many things for our material comfort simply by hearing they are already there but just by hearing one can transform them if you want to build a very high skyscraper this does not mean that we have to create it the materials for the skyscraper wood metal earth etc are already there but we make our intimate relationship with those already created material elements by hearing how to utilize them modern economic advancement for creation is also product of hearing and similarly one can create a favorable field of spiritual activities by hearing from the right source arjuna was a gross materialist in the bodily conception of life and was suffering from the bodily concept very acutely but simply by hearing arjuna became spiritualized krishna conscious person hearing is very important and that hearing is produced from the sky by hearing only can we make proper use of what of that which already exists the principle of hearing to properly utilize 
preconceived materials is applicable to spiritual paraphernalia as well. We must hear from the proper spiritual source. What is the effect of hearing? What should be the effect of hearing? Hare Krishna. Question. We uh, will do more kirtan, more chanting. Okay. More kirtan, more chanting. Anything else? Purification happens too. Purification happens. Okay. So, shravanam means transformation. Right? So, if you are doing continuous reading, hearing, then there should be transformation. If there's no transformation, then that hearing, either we are not hearing properly or we are not hearing things that are relevant for us or the source is not authentic or authorized. Mm. It is very, very important that we should because it's it's very simple to understand. If somebody reads Prabhupada's books, which means hearing from Prabhupada, his life transforms. Right? So that is the power of hearing. So we have to make sure that when we are hearing, irrespective of whom we are, we are hearing from, uh, many times it also happens that we hear the wrong topics. Um, you know, which is why actually this whole shravanam has to be done in guidance with the Shiksha Guru. Shiksha Guru actually is the one who has to give us the knowledge. Why he has to give us knowledge? Because everybody is in a different stage in their life and different set of challenges, different adhikara to hear, different topics, what is relevant for us, you know, and we might not completely understand this. Uh, generally, we, because we don't think sufficiently, whenever we have challenges, we tend to think about, only about the immediate cause. We don't tend to think about the root cause. And if we are doing decisions of what to hear based on our immediate cause, then that might not really help the problem. Um, so, we require guidance for even hearing. Uh, and if right uh, hearing happens, uh, then the right changes come in at the right time. If we hear things that are way beyond our current level of spiritual progress, then it won't really help us. In fact, many a times it might even result in us in a fall down. For example, if people are hearing uh, about Krishna's Rasalila without actually understanding that I am not body, I am spirit, soul, and without actually engaging in activities of the soul, then you might even fall down. So, it's very important that we hear according to our Adhikara. Um, and if we hear properly, from the right source, uh, then we should experience change in heart. Uh, we should be able to at least theoretically know what I should do to overcome my problem. Mm, that should be the result of uh, hearing. right? So if you actually, if you have read Prabhupada's books nicely, mm, we cannot have any problems that for which we don't know what to do. And Prabhupada has addressed pretty much everything, all kinds of scenarios, all kinds of situations, all kinds of problems in his books. We have to just read and then we'll readily know, oh, okay, Prabhupada is talking about this. And normally, this is a practice that I do, which I suggest that everybody should do. You know, whenever you are troubled by something, just start reading about that topic from Veda Vest. So normally, what I do is... I go to Veda base and I put, say for, ang for example, anger. 
now i just put like this right and then i start reading whatever comes and this will actually start giving us a lot of insights into the topic and then we have to structure a under clear understanding not that we just read one or two you know paragraphs here and then conclude something no and this might happen for many days you know like i might see how many so many hits are there right so that too these are only the most important books so this might go on for many days and then we i am parallelly making notes on on this topic that i am trying to understand deeply and eventually maybe you know 15 days 20 days one month based on um, how see this already like so many references and right so we might, i might come to an understanding of this topic of anger and in that obviously when we read propad's books propad would have already always i mean in his purpose given solutions what needs to be done yeah, of course so we'll get gyana then we'll also understand the vignana part etc so actually then we can completely understand uh, okay what do i do with this so it's very important that devotees actually should do this kind of in depth study and this is where intelligence will get engaged otherwise that's why i keep saying you know don't look for shortcuts don't look for ready made solutions it's not going to help us in the long run it's okay temporarily maybe somebody doesn't have time for it but if that becomes an excuse then in the long run it won't be beneficial because it's not like people who are guiding us are going to be with us all along you know yeah if they are then good but we also have to remember tomorrow we also have to guide somebody right so which means that we have to build our own thought process understanding based on propas books not by speculation so this is very very important actually so hearing means actually this uh, and it should result in transformation in other ways we have to really very critically assess our quality of our shravanam and uh, i mean i recollect when i used to hear propas purports every statement i used to pause the lecture every statement because i can't understand it's so deep propas goes from one place to another place something and i see just totally unconnected uh, now slowly after so many years i can understand his thought process mm, right but it takes so many years of uh, it's an austerity to hear propas it's not like some you know rasa it's not like uh, somebody speaking some juicy stuff right like some leela some no not like that it's heavy stuff is very very heavy uh, it just hits the you know hits our false ego uh, it's very difficult to consume it require lot more effort actually lot more effort than normal hearing because this has to be the quality of hearing if we do this quality of hearing then all our anarthas will go very quickly hmm here it is said that from sound the ether become manifest in that air oh, okay we read this in uh, okay principle of hearing okay we finish this one atha shayatvam shabdasya drashtur lingatvam eva cha tanmatratvam cha na baso lakshanam kavayo viduhu persons who are learned and who through knowledge define sound as that which conveys the idea of an object indicates the presence of a speaker screen from our view and constitutes the subtle form of ether this is a technical thing of what is true knowledge uh, what is sound it conveys the idea of an object because when we say uh, computer so it conveys the idea of an object it indicates somebody is speaking so there is a speaker and it also constitutes the subtle form of ether it is very clear here in that as soon as we speak of hearing there must be a speaker without a speaker there is no question of hearing therefore the vedic knowledge which is known as shruti or that which is received by hearing is also called apurusha apurusha means not spoken by any person materially created it is stated in the beginning of shrimad bhagavatam tene brahma rada the sound of brahman or veda was first impregnated in the heart of brahma the original learned man adi kavaye how did he become learned whenever there is learning there must be a speaker and the process of hearing but brahma was the first created being who spoke to him since no one was there who was a spiritual master to give knowledge he was the only living creature therefore the vedic knowledge was imparted within his heart 
by the Supreme Person of Godhead who is seated within everyone as Paramatma. Now, this can also happen with us if provided we are sincere and surrendered. Hmm. Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam. Krishna is saying that Dadami Buddhi Yogam is through Paramatma. Hmm. Externally as the Acharya, the Guru and internally as Paramatma. Now, ideally, whenever we are in uh, situations, we should first take shelter of this external Acharya, uh, Guru. Uh, we should hear from him. We should take his instructions. And then uh, sometimes, you know, when the Guru is not available, uh, Paramatma might also take up that uh, accessible, not available, means not accessible. And of course, even later when he might not be available in this material world, uh, then that revelation happens through Paramatma. So, but this requires a high level of surrender. The first stage of actually uh, being able to get um, guidance from Guru, uh, who is physically present, uh, is a is a basic prerequisite. I mean, that has to be done because otherwise, the whole point of initiation actually is, becomes a big question. Mm. If we have a serious problem, we have to approach the Guru and ask him, mm. right? Or we should approach his senior disciples who have been trained by the Guru. Uh, and ideally, we should get all our answers um, in disciplic succession, meaning not uh, something misinterpreted by somebody in the middle. Mm. Uh, but for us to know whether something is being interpreted or not in the middle, first we need to have clarity about the message of the Guru. Uh, so that is the reason why this whole process of Shravanam is emphasized so much. I mean, first, before initiation, one has to be very clear and hear from Guru. And once he is clear about what the Guru's instructions are, what he expects out of his disciples, and then we can think, okay, am I ready for what he's saying? Am I ready to commit myself to his words? Am I ready to commit my life uh, to fulfill his mission? Both the instructions and service. Unfortunately, the second part is only mostly given more focus, which is service. Okay, okay, I will do whatever service my Guru Maharaj says. But before we do service, we have to actually follow his instructions. For which do we really know his instructions? For which we have to do Shavanam. So then only at a later point of time, at a, when we have already become sufficiently pure, uh, but still we are sometimes stuck with situations, problems, etc. Mm, in fact, Krishna is saying that Yena Maam Upayantite, Krishna will reveal that knowledge through the heart by which one can actually come to him. And again, this one can come to him is a very complicated uh, truth because all of us are unique jivas uh, with unique kind of relationship with the Lord and all of us have our unique positions from previous lives, etc. So, maneuvering through our previous life's karma phala and then our current propensity to do bhakti, there's so many, it's very complex, right? Uh, every person have, will have their own unique uh, path to go back to Krishna. And the Guru is actually the one who is qualified to know this and in, uh, you know, um, guide us. Uh, now, in some extraordinary situations, uh, when, when Guru is not physically present with us, then Krishna will do that as Paramatma. But this Shavanam is very, very important. Somehow, I see devotees just uh, give very little importance to this hearing. Now, Shiksha Guru is so important, right? Prabhupada is our Shiksha Guru, and the Diksha Guru has to first be the Shiksha Guru. Only then he will be the Diksha Guru. Because how do you decide from whom to take Diksha? He is after the Shiksha. Right? So this is very, very important. Otherwise, the whole point, Prabhupada is emphasizing so much about hearing, but we will just give lip service to this. We will do our own hearing. Now, yes, whatever we want to do. Vedic knowledge is understood to be spoken by the Supreme Lord and therefore it is free from the defects of material understanding. Material understanding is defective. 
if we hear something from a conditioned soul, it is full of defects. See, this also, that is why, you know, when we take advice from other devotees, we have to be very, very careful. We have to actually understand what is their position. Are they conditioned? Are they liberated? Right? Only then we have to take advice. Because if we take advice from conditioned souls, it will be full of defects. It will not be based on Guru Sadhu Shastra. So always we have to be very, very careful about taking guidance. And we have to take guidance. Everybody you know, has to take guidance from somebody superior to us. But we should be clear whether somebody is superior just because of number of years in devotion or actually by qualification, by knowledge, by practice. All material and mundane information is tainted by illusion, uh, error, cheating and imperfection of the senses. Because Vedic knowledge and knowledge was imparted by the Supreme Lord who is transcendental to material creation. It is perfect. If you receive that knowledge from Brahma in disciplic succession, then we receive perfect knowledge. But the point is that we have to receive without any changes, without any modification. Every word we hear has a meaning behind it. As soon as we hear the word water, there is a substance water behind the word. Similarly, as soon as we hear the word God, there is a meaning to it. If we receive that meaning and explanation of God from God himself, then it is perfect. But if we speculate about the meaning of God, it is imperfect. Again, so speculation. What does speculate mean? Can somebody explain? What is speculation? Hare Krishna, yeah. To modify, maybe change something. Okay, to modify or change. Speculate. What else? Hare Krishna. Yeah, Hare Krishna. When, when we add to and to, like you say, I think this, it, it should have been like this. I yeah. think it was like this. Yeah. It does not mean this. You know, when you're adapting it to your conditions, you're, spec yeah. uh, you're speculating. Okay. So, speculating simply means I think. So, when we say I think, it is speculation. Okay, when we say Krishna says or, you know, Acharya say, Guru says, uh, then it is not speculation. But simply saying that Krishna said or Guru said or Prabhupada said without actually it being true is also speculation. Many times we think that we are basing our statements on Shastra, but we are not. Uh, because we are in illusion. And so, anytime we try to make a statement, we have to somehow base it on Shastra. If it is not based on Guru Sadhu Shastra, then it is speculation. Even if it is semi based on Guru Sadhu Shastra, it is speculation. It has to be 100% based on Guru Sadhu Shastra. So, if it is partial, also it is speculation. Bhagavad Gita, which is the science of God, is spoken by the person of God himself. This is perfect knowledge. Mental speculators or so-called philosophers who are researching what is actually God will never understand the nature of God. What can they understand the nature of God? That God is uh, tied up by Yashoda Mata? Who can understand this? They'll say, no, no, all this is just imagination. Uh, how can God be the object of somebody's mercy? Uh, Krishna is at the mercy of Yashoda Mata. You can understand this. Hmm. Science of God has to be understood in disciplic succession from Brahma, who was first instructed about knowledge of God by God himself. We can understand the knowledge of God by hearing Bhagavad Gita from a person authorized in the disciplic succession. Authorized. Also, this is one of the reasons why, why actually People who are not connected to the parampara are not, should not be sitting on the Vyasasana. Uh, somehow, you know, I've seen many instances where this is not followed. Either somebody outside parampara uh, is allowed to sit on Vyasasana or somebody who is not yet connected to the parampara, who is like a still, uh, you know, uh, practicing devotee, not yet connected to the parampara, uh, is made to sit on Vyasasana. But generally, it's not the right practice. The right practice is to um, 
for a person who is absolutely connected with the parampara and whose knowledge is also not speculative. Uh, only such people should be allowed to sit on the Vyasasana. Um, when you speak of seeing, there must be form. By our sense perception, the beginning experience is the sky. Sky is the beginning of form. And from sky, other forms emanate. Therefore, the objects of knowledge and sense perception begin from the sky. Okay. Fine. Bhutanam chidra dhatritvam bahir antaram evacha pranendriyatma dishnyatvam nabaso vritti lakshanam the activities and characteristics of the ethereal element can be observed as the accommodation of room for the external and internal existences of all living entities, namely the field of activities of the vital layer, senses and the mind. Hmm. Um, accommodation of room for external and internal existence of living entities, hmm. which is the basically, basically the body, hmm. the body, senses and mind. Uh, the mind senses and the vital force or living entity have forms although they are not visible to the naked eye form rests in subtle existence in the sky and internally it is perceived as the veins within the body and the circulation of the vital air externally there are invisible forms of sense objects the production of the invisible sense objects is the external activity of the ethereal element and the circulation of vital air and blood is its internal activity uh, so basically, we can't see the vital layer, we can't see the force, we can't see the mind. They all occupy space, uh, which is what it is saying here. So there is some space which is there, which is the ether, where which is providing this accommodation for all these uh, external and internal entities. That subtle forms exist in the ether has been proven by modern science by transmission of television by which forms or photographs of one place are transmitted to another by action of ethereal element. This is very nicely explained here. This verse is the potential basis of great scientific research work, but it explains how subtle forms are generated from the ethereal element, what their characteristics and actions are, and how the tangible elements, namely air, fire, water, earth, are manifested from the subtle form. And it's a very technical stuff. Mental activities or psychological actions of thinking, feeling, willing are also activities on the platform of ethereal existence. Statement of Bhagavad Gita that the mental situation at the time of death is the basis of the next birth is also corroborated in this verse. Mental existence transforms into tangible form as soon as there is an opportunity due to contamination or development of the gross elements of subtle form. So what this means is that our next birth, the next body depends on the state of the mind. Uh, so, mental existence transforms into a tangible form. Whatever, whatever was there in the mind now transforms into a tangible form in the next life. So, this is also this uh, saying that there are activities uh, on the platform of ethereal existence. Vital air and blood is this internal activity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is what this one subtle forms exist in the ether is what is being explained by this mental existence. Right. So subtle forms exist in the ether has been proved by transmission of television, by which forms or photographs of one place are transmitted to another place by action of the ethereal element. Because it's all going through the sky, na? So this transmission is happening through waves, etc., which is the action of ether. Uh, that's what Prabhupada is saying, that this is the potential basis of great scientific research work. For it explains how subtle forms are generated from the ethereal element, what their characteristics and actions are, and how the tangible elements are manifested from the subtle form. Now, from this subtle form, all the tangible elements get manufactured, which will be explained subsequently. Anyway, some of these like creation-related stuff, in fact, once uh, I was talking to Vidwan Prabhu and he said, I'm I'm not such a big expert in creation. And if he is only saying I'm not a, such an expert in creation, then, you know, 
i know what my situation position is so whatever little i can understand i'll i can explain okay so we'll stop here any questions comments ओके नो क्वेश्चंस देन विल क्लोज श्रीमद् भागवतम की जय जगत गुरु श्री प्रोपाद की जय वांचा कल्पतरु दृष्ट कृपा सिंधु देव च पतिता नाम पावन देव वैष्णवी देव नमो नमः अनंत कोटि वैष्णवी की जय